Hey guys, Irius here and welcome along to another video. So the manufacturer season is done and whilst we wait for the new season to be announced I thought I'd jump into the dailies and do some racing to try and get my driver rating up if I can. So in this video we're going to cover the two races I did this week here at Bathurst. I struggled with quality as you're going to see so we're going to be looking to make our way back up through the pack which is easier said than done at one of the most dangerous tracks in GT Sport. So you join me here watching one of the top 10 times but before we get into this one if you like the video guys please make sure you hit that like button it makes a massive difference and likewise if you're new around here and aren't yet subscribed please subscribe to the channel as well. So as I say we're here on board with one of the top 10 times I think this was the top time in the region at the time of filming this video. Now I always do this just to get an understanding of what's going on, where the braking points are, what gears to use etc etc before I even go out on track. So once I've done that it was time to get out on track and to be honest it took me a bit of time to try and replicate that. It took me 10 laps to get even into the 2 minutes getting a 2 minute point 806. Then I managed to take 4 tenths off that with a 2 minutes point 401. And then the next lap, I got a 2 minutes 0.241. And then it was time to do the race itself. So I'd done enough practice, but again, just really, really struggled with this. Didn't have the out and out pace in quality to get where I needed to. But it was time to go to the pre-race time trial. So you get 15 minutes before every race, as most of you, I'm sure, already know. But it was good because that is where I set my fastest time. I managed to set a 2 minutes 0 0.030 just outside of the 2 minute target that I wanted but we all know my strengths do not lie in quality so I took that time and now we're going to see what we can do in the race. So for this one as you can see here we will be starting in 8th place. A mix of A plus and A drivers in this one so some quick guys in here but we're going to have some work to do nonetheless. Now I was unsure if this race was actually ever going to get underway. We had a massively long wait to start. I thought it was actually going to crash. The game actually held us for 30 seconds in total. But thankfully it didn't in the end and we managed to get away. But while we wait for that, we've got a bit of time to introduce the race here. We've got nine laps. We've got a nice combo actually of softs and mediums available for this one and they're both required so you've got to use both otherwise you get a one minute penalty i think it is at the end of the race and what that does is it opens up a few different strategies two of which i'll be trying today as you'll see later one in this one and then we're going to change it for the second race fuel wasn't an issue here we've got loads of that to burn so that's why you saw me burning it at the start of the race and due to all of that we'll be doing a two stopper to start off in this first race We'll be going on the softs here until the end of lap number four. Then we'll be hitting a single lap on the mediums just to get rid of them. And then we're going to jump back onto the softs for the remainder of the race. So now that we know the strategy, we've got to get to the first pit stop. So as always here, the first part of the race, we're just going to try and keep it clean and avoid any issues. Now, we had an okay run over the top of the mountain for the first time. And we're going to come down here into Forest Elbow and this is where the Corvette really comes into its own. We're going to see here that whilst the Aston has a run on the Corvette I'm going to get a run on them both but I get close and I'm not sure because there's been a new penalty system upgrade whether I can bump that. So I choose not to but what we're going to do here the Corvette cuts us off here but that's fine because we're going to go down the inside sorry down the outside I should say which then becomes the inside of the chase and we're up to seventh place now. Rejoining the action here down through Forest Elbow and we're going to experience exactly the same thing again. The Aston has yet another run on yet another Corvette and again we're going to get out of the throttle here. So we're closing in on him, closing in on him, closing in on him. He's going to pull to the side but it's just a roadblock so we're going to just get out of the throttle here. I try not to get too close in the braking zone but I get a little bit too close. There's going to be contact here and as a result we're going to get a two second penalty. Whilst I'm a bit annoyed with it, 
you know, it was justified. I'm not going to go for a move on the Italian here as I've got a two second penalty, which would be completely pointless and just waste us both time. But the main thing is I didn't get the car in front of penalty. So I paid the time for the mistake that I made. And by the time that we served our penalty and got back up to speed, we'd fallen all the way down to 11th. But it's going to be 10th pretty soon as we're going to overtake the Spaniard here in our favourite place down the back straight and get back into the top 10. Now, at that point, I just had to get my head down. And we did so, and we did a good job of catching the cars up in front. And you see, we're staring at the back of a Portuguese driver here. And I don't want to spoil it, but I think you know what's going to happen here. The grunt of this Corvette is so good. I know there's a Corvette in front, but it just goes to show the slipstream as well. So we're going to line him up nicely, get our braking point sorted, get it stopped, make the apex, and we're now up to ninth place. Oh, good stuff. Happy with that. Really, really happy with that. And it's time to come in. So just like that, the first stint is over. Being real careful not to muller it on the way in or bottle it or end up in the gravel or anything like that. So we're off the softs, remember, and we're going to go onto the mediums and we're going to see where we come out. We're only on this for one lap here, so I'm not really too worried about any traffic or any of that that's out and around, but we've come out in 10th place. We managed to survive up and over the mountain. We're going to come in again, trying not to hit that tyre barrier on the right, get those softs on, and now it's time to attack the second part of the race. We come back out in 10th once again, we should be nice and quick here and all we're going to try and do is try and catch the pack up in front which we've managed to do by the time we come round and down the hill on the next lap you'll see that i actually put in a purple sector well second sector so far so we're on for a good lap here fastest of anyone at this point in the lap once again we're behind the portuguese the swiss driver got past him earlier on off camera and up ahead we're going to see things all start to kick off so up ahead there is a Brit serving his penalty he's going to come into view shortly as normal we're catching the Portuguese driver it seems to have happened a couple of times in this race already we both go around the Brit and then up the inside once again to go up to eighth so up to ninth then up to eighth in quick succession there's a group of three up ahead of us as you can see here we've only got two and a bit laps left in this one so we're going to continue to push and see if we can do anything about them so continuing to push here on lap eight we put in the fastest first sector of anybody so far and i'm not the only one who's pushing keep your eye on the swiss here we've been around him for most of the race here and we're trying to catch up with him now coming through this tricky left hander here you're going to see that he gets it a little bit wrong it ends up in the barriers on the left hand side and we overtake him and go up to seventh place so on the final lap now there's fifth and sixth up ahead as you can see but in a carbon copy move of what we saw the swiss do earlier i just get on the power a little bit too early here and a little bit too hard i then fly left clip the wall and unfortunately that is going to push us out of range for the two in front and that's going to mean we're going to come across the line in seventh place not too bad we're up net one place and especially considering the penalty we had i was quite happy with where we finished but we're not going to leave it there like we normally would we're going to go again because i actually did something i don't normally do but i'm definitely going to do a little bit more of now so i went into the replay section and I actually checked out what the winner of the race did. And we're going to see here that the winner actually did a different strategy to us. Well, probably not surprisingly, to be quite honest, because he won and we came seventh. He actually ended up doing a one-stopper. Now, last race, we did a two-stopper. Just to recap, we were on softs till the end of lap four, a single lap on mediums, and then softs for the remainder of the race. So in this second race, we're going to go to the end of lap six on softs and then move to the mediums for the remainder of the race in the hope that the time lost on the harder compound is actually less than the time it takes to do a pit stop. We end up in a better position come the end of the race. So here we are then just waiting for the lobby to appear for race number two and you'll see that it's a much harder lobby. So we're going to be starting this one in 15th 
It's still very close though, one tenth away from seventh. So there could be a good opportunity to rise up the field here. Now we got away much quicker here. There was no 30 second wait this time around. And as you can see here, I wasn't trying to wait around either. As I tried to go around the outside here of the Nissan at turn number two, I couldn't pull it off though, but someone did disconnect. So we're up to 14th. And I didn't have the greatest trip up over the top of the mountain, but keep your eyes ahead. Under the bridge, there's a huge crash. 10th also has a penalty as well, so there must have been some sort of involvement with them there. And as a result, we're up to 13th, which is going to soon become 12th, as obviously the penalty is going to be served. So all in all, a decent start to this one. We're up to 12th. We've come up and over the mountain again, and we're going to be looking to make further moves. Now... This seems to be happening quite a lot in these two races, but we find ourselves once again in the slipstream of the Portuguese guy up in front. So we're going to overtake him and go up to 11th. So that's a great start for us. As I've just mentioned, we're up four places now, which is soon going to be five. Keep your eyes on the driver from Qatar here. He's just going to go wide there and then just have another massive crash here at the bridge. So we're now up into the top 10. So, pretty good start, happy with that. We've got to keep pushing on. And we did so over the next lap or so and we managed to catch the pair up in front. So previously I wasn't bumping. I wasn't doing any bump drafting or anything like that because I wasn't sort of too keen or too clear on what the penalty system was gonna do. But here I thought just sod it. They're side by side as you can see. We're closing in and I just tap the switch which pushes him ahead of the Corvette and then pulls us through with the slipstream. So we're now up to ninth. I did think about going for a move on the Swiss, but I thought two in one at this stage of the race anyway, probably be a little bit too much. And the Swiss immediately is gonna be coming in along with quite a few of the other drivers to be quite honest. But because of the change in strategy, we didn't come in. We're not due of course until the end of this lap. And in a reversal of fortune, we are actually going to be overtaken for a change. But it's not going to be a problem though, because we know we're coming in at the end of this lap. As long as they do it quickly, and they don't cause us too many issues, then it's not a problem. So the Corvette's going to come through here, and then he's going to do the double whammy by throwing it up the inside of the Italian as well. We get close to the Italian, but there's no contact, so thankfully we don't get a penalty, and we can just dive off here into the pits and the Italian actually is doing exactly the same so we made it safely into the pits here we've put our mediums on and now rather than being on them for one lap like we were last time we are now going to be on them for the rest of the race so that tells me that I need a different mindset previously we were only on them for one lap so it was just getting through the lap and then going onto the softs and then attacking but here we're just trying to consolidate our position being on the harder compound. Now I am quite concerned because there were two cars behind us. You can see the two cars up in front have gotten away which is fine and the cars behind as anticipated because as I said we're on the harder compound have started to catch up. Now I'm going to go defensive here. I don't want to give these positions up at all. So what I've done is I'm going to plant the car to the right hand side here, knowing that we've got a right hander up ahead. I know firsthand how difficult it is to go round the outside here. It's just not going to happen. You have to have an amazing, amazing maneuver to do that. So he's not going to make that move there, which is good. So we stay in ninth to fight another day. And then strangely, as we're coming down the back straight here, he doesn't actually overtake us. Now, it confused me at the time, but now I potentially know what he was doing. He was potentially waiting to pull it off on the final lap when I'm not going to have a chance to get past. Because obviously this Corvette is mega in a straight line, really, really good with slipstream as well. So if he overtook me on the previous lap, I'd be behind and in prime position for the final lap. So... He's going to try and go down the outside here, so clearly a little bit of a change of mindset for him. He needs to get past. You can just see in the rear view, well not the rear view, but the radar, that a second driver has joined the party. So everything is very, very close here. When you have three cars on the same radar, 
you know things are a bit close, especially around here going over the mountain. You need to stay away from these walls and also stay away from other cars. So I'm just trying to keep it clean and I'm just going to see what happens when we get to the final straight. It's going to be so important to get a good run out of Forest Elbow, get the power down whilst not clipping that wall on the right hand side. So coming through the S's here, getting it sopped, nice and calm, nice and collected and I can see that he is right behind us. So we've just got one more real difficult corner here, get it stopped here. We run a little bit wide but managed to keep it out of the wall and you can see he is on us. But he is in a different car. He's in the GTR, as we've known, because we've seen him earlier on in the race. So he's got a run on us, he pulls out, but even with the slipstream, he does not have enough. The Corvette is just too strong, too powerful, and there's nothing that he can do. I go to the left anyway to stay nice and defensive. You can see the German up in front there has had an issue as well, but it looks like at this point, we're gonna consolidate our ninth place which I am happy with. A couple of good results overall. I really enjoyed the dailies this week. It was a good mix of a challenging track with a fun car class, lots of overtakes and even some defensive driving as well. We had some penalties as well, so it pretty much had everything. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. And as a result, here is the slight gain in driver rating we got after these races. I'm looking forward to the upcoming week. Should be a fairly strong combo for me, so hopefully we can get that even higher in preparation for the upcoming new FIA season. But until then, guys... I am going to end the video there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already, with crucially those notifications turned on so you don't miss a thing. But have a great week of racing, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.